So for today's build, we're going to be making a saw till. Uh, I just I need a place to store my hand saws, and I want something up on the wall up there. And so these are the one, two, three, four, five that I'm going to be working on right now. But I want to build in some uh, just a little bit larger so that I can fit a couple more saws. Um, I have a couple of saws that I've restored here. I have another saw that I need to restore and a couple more that I want to restore later on. And then I have my two uh, Veritas saws that I want to um, have on this till as well. And this basically shows you how it's going to be. Basically, it's going to have a construction where they're held in and then at an angle placed like this on the wall. And so I cut the wood down. I spared you the milling process because we've seen that a million times, but I plane the wood down to 5 eighths because I wanted it a little smaller than 3 quarters but not quite half an inch so 5 eighths is right in between and um, so I made every made sure everything was straight flat I planed everything down all the edges um, everything's 5 eighths except for 5 eighths except for this piece which I left a little thicker, it's closer to 7 eighths, I think. Actually, it's closer to 3 quarters. But basically, this is going to get rounded, and then this is what, what the saws are going to sit on, the bottom part. And this will hold the saws up like that. So I will be rounding this out. These two will be the back. Actually, I'll put it together in a little mock-up here so that you can see how this is all going to go together. So these are the two sides, and I'm making the cabinet six inches wide, six inches deep, and the sides are, I believe, 40 inches. So it'll be 40 inches tall by six inches deep. Basically, these, it's going to be real simple, but I do. For this video, I'm probably only going to do what I'm going to call the carcass of it. And uh, and then once I do that, what I'll do is I'll come back and I'll make the, the drawer. Because I do want a drawer in here for like saw files and any little things that might need to go on the saw. So then these two will brace sitting down like this will be here. And then there will be one here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to have a piece. I don't know if you can see it, but I'm going to have a piece. I'm just going to simulate it with this board. I'm going to have a piece like this that's going to have saw curves on it. And it'll sit like that. But I don't want this to be integral to this thing. Because I want, I want to be able to, if I want to move things around, if I want to shift it. So this gets screwed on afterwards. And that way, if I ever need to replace it or reduce it or change it or, you know, space it out differently, I'll have that option. But this is basically what it's going to look like. I'm going to have some curves on the sides, and that's what we'll get to next. We'll be marking out those curves and cutting them out on the bandsaw. Okay, so to mark this out, what I'm going to use first, well, I'm going to use a, a piece that has the same thickness just to mark where my drawer is going to go, and then we'll mark out this curve, and uh, I'll show you a neat trick for that. So first, I'm going to mark out where the thickness of this is, and I need a square. So that's my first mark, that'll be my bottom piece. Then I want I want a five inch square. So 
I want a five inch uh, drawer. So I'm going to put a five inch line. And then I'll mark the square, I'll mark that line in. And then I'll use the same thickness for the top piece. I'll mark this in. And then I'm going to give myself a little bit of room here for the piece that holds the uh, the saws in like this. And that's where my curve is going to start to go back. So I'm going to mark it there. And so this is where I want my curve to start. Okay, and for my curve, I'm just going to use, I have this really thin cutoff from an oak board I had, and oak bed is really cool, and uh, I guess it's about an eighth of an inch, and I just keep it around and I use it for marking curves, and so what I'm going to do is, I'm going to mark how, how far the curve I want to go in, I think I want like three inches from the back. Gotta find the center spot though. So from here, let me take So we have 31 and a half, which is 15 and three quarters is the halfway mark. <clears throat> so I'm just going to mark the halfway mark here. I'm going to see if I like that. I'm not sure I'm going to like that. But we'll see. And I think I want about three inches from the back so that it still has some meat to it, but we'll see. Maybe two and a half at the deepest point. Because I sort of want it to come back in a little bit on itself. So maybe up here is three inches. And in the middle, we only go two inches. We'll see how that looks. Okay. I'm going to use this hold fast. Doesn't have to be really tight. I'm just using it as a stop for my piece of wood. So let's see how we do here. If I go there. Start there. That's not bad. I actually like that shape because I can round off the top a little bit. Okay, so now that I know I like that shape, I'm going to use a little piece of wood here. I'm going to hold it down with the clamp. At the uh, that two and a half inch mark that we marked. Okay. And then the hold fast, which now doesn't reach. Hold fast goes there. Still marked there. And now that goes there, that goes there, and that goes there. And we can make our mark. There it is. I know you can't see it from there, but I like the shape. And then what I'll do is I'll probably round off the top to give it a little bit of curviness. And I'll find something round to do that with. Ah, perfect. So, hose coupling. that'll be my final shape. So next what I'll do is I will uh, take this to the bandsaw and cut off this piece, clean it up, and then use it as a template for the other piece.
So now we can see the, the shape of the side. And so that's one side like this. And uh, the other side will match. I just, I'm going to clean up this side and then we'll cut the other side to match it. So now that I have this piece shaped the way I like it, um, I use a combination of rasps, spoke shape, and some sandpaper to get it smooth and to the shape I want. Now we'll use this as a template for the other one, and we'll use a, the router with a flush trim bit. It should make a perfect copy of it, so we'll go to that next. Okay, so I've marked all of my parts. I don't think you can see it from there, but basically it's just got two lines because I'm going to put two <clears throat> dominoes in each one of these. This one only gets one. This one gets three. And then I've also marked that. So, I mean, now all we got to do is make sure that the uh, dominoes are in the right settings when we're doing the right thing. When they're going into the end grain, they're going to go in deeper, 28 millimeters. And when they're going into the face grain, since this is only five-eighths of an inch or 15 millimeters, 16 millimeters, um, they can only go in 12, in 12 millimeters into these. So let's make sure we have our settings right and it's time to just make some mortises. Okay, so for the dry assembly, it's really easy. I mean, just put everything into their respective holes. 
and uh, let's hope everything fits, or it fits right at least. But since I made the mortises uh, on this piece, if you look at I made these mortises on the bigger setting, so they give me enough wiggle room. Like right now, for example, you see that uh, maybe you can't see it, but basically this is not flush right now, but. Since I have a little wiggle room, I tap that back piece until it's until it's flush, and then if the backs don't end up all being flush, I can always clean them all up later. Now here's a little trick that I learned on the Festool website. If you look at the way I did these. I did one mortise in the in the tight setting and one mortise in the loose setting. That way, the bottom one references exactly where that mortise goes, but the top one gives me a little wiggle room so that they both fit in perfectly. It's a good little trick. So far so good. finish the, um, the saw till. Actually, I'm actually going to finish it while it's disassembled like this and then I'm going to put it together after it's all finished. It really lends itself well for that. Um, I just have to be careful and tape off some of the areas where I don't want finish to go. You know, some of the, these areas right here. But that should be easy enough. Um, and I'll leave those for last, but all the other parts, as long as, on all of these parts, as long as I don't do the end grain, where the tenon and the glue is going to go, I can finish pretty much the entire thing. Um, so that's why I've decided to go this route. And I've already uh, sanded, scraped, planed, everything down to basically final final sanding basically so everything should be ready um, I'm just gonna finish it with some shellac and I'm just going to apply it in really thin coats
time has come for the final glue up. So I recommend you prepare everything before you start. I have all the clamps, more than I'll probably need, but I have them here. I have my glue, I have a glue brush, and some paper towels just in case I need them to clean up. And my parts are all ready. Um, so, without further ado, let's get started on this glue up. And now we just wait, give it about an hour and then we can take it off the clamps. Okay, so I believe we're done. Uh, looks great, feels great. I will be adding a drawer in here, but that'll be for the next video. Um, I guess the only thing left is to test it out. Let me come around. There's no real order I have these in or anything, but... I guess I'll put all my small saws over here. There it is. I have room for a couple more saws. But other than that, that's what it's going to look like. I'll hang it up on the wall, so it's all made out of cherry with a, a zebra wood insert in the middle. Well, thank you for watching. Uh, please like and subscribe if you like my videos, and uh, I'll see you in the next one.